in one sentence, what is gravity? Gravity is a force that couples to mass. Gravity is the pull of the Earth on an object down towards the surface. Gravity is kind of a made up concept for how we explain why small things go towards big things. Gravity is the effect of space time on mass. Gravity really is, is uh, it's everywhere around us. 9.8 meters per second force that draws stuff together. It is the force that pulls matter to the Earth. Curvature of space-time. If we are going to give an explanation of gravity, then we have to start with Newton. Everyone has heard of Sir Isaac Newton and the apple. By watching the apple fall to Earth, he discovered gravity. But what does that really mean? Lots of people had seen apples fall. But what separated Newton from the existing views of his day was that he recognized that the action of an apple falling to Earth was the same phenomenon that causes the moon to orbit the Earth and the planets to orbit the sun. According to Newton, gravity is an attractive force which acts between two objects that have mass. This means that gravity always tries to pull objects together. How does this explain the orbit of the moon, though? Wouldn't that mean that the moon would be pulled towards the Earth until they collide? It would if it weren't for the moon's own velocity. See, as the moon orbits the Earth, its velocity carries it forward in a straight line. Gravity pulls the moon in towards the Earth and changes its trajectory. This continued motion as pulled in is what makes the moon stay in a circular orbit instead of flying off into space. Think of a ball being spun around on a string. The string is pulling the ball in towards the center while the ball's velocity carries it around in a circular path. This is what Newton realized and what makes his theory of gravity so useful. Gravity behaves like an invisible force between two objects with mass. Take for instance two asteroids in space. They each have mass, so there is a gravitational force between them which tries to pull them close together. This invisible force has an infinite range and is dependent on how close together the objects are. This phenomenon is present between all objects in the universe. It affects large objects such as stars, planets, and moons and small objects like apples and trees. There's even a gravitational force between you and me. Even today, Newton's theory of gravity is remarkable and can be used to explain a vast number of things, but it's not complete. Newton's theory explained gravity, but the instantaneous action at a distance wasn't consistent with Einstein's theory of special relativity. That theory, which Einstein published in 1905, showed that space and time weren't two separate entities, but they were instead combined into a single space-time. Special relativity laid out the groundwork for space-time, but it didn't explain gravity. So Einstein worked for years until in 1916 he published his general theory of relativity. This was his explanation of gravity and would replace Newton's theory. The secret to success of general relativity was letting space-time curve. Think of space-time as a fabric that could be bent or curved by objects with mass. Things like the Earth or the Moon can cause space-time to curve, and gravity is the way that objects travel along that curvature. In order to talk about space-time, let's review a fundamental concept that was discussed in our first video, the space-time diagram. In a space-time diagram, we plot time on the vertical axis and spatial dimension on the horizontal axis. For these graphs, the units of measurement are in seconds for both the time and the distance. For distance, this is achieved by measuring in light seconds, the distance that light can travel in one second. Einstein said that the speed of light is constant and is the maximum possible speed, so it acts as a cosmic speed limit. The world line of a light ray is 45 degrees from the time axis, because for every second in time, the light moves one light second in distance. But because any object with mass can never go faster than light, it will always be tilted closer to the time axis. While the curvature of space can explain why moving objects with mass are drawn together, what is it that could cause stationary objects to begin moving in the first place? Why does an apple hanging at rest on a tree start moving toward the Earth? The answer is quite simple and lies in the fact that we are dealing not with the curvature of just space, but of space-time. As an analogy, consider two people, one in Florida and one in Texas. Both begin walking due north. 
If the Earth were flat, they would move parallel to each other and they would never meet. But the surface of the Earth isn't flat, it's curved. Thus, while they're both walking straight north, their paths end up crossing at the North Pole. In this analogy, the surface of the Earth represents a curved space-time, not just space. Likewise, the apple and the Earth are both moving on the world lines in the same direction, but because the space-time they are moving through is curved, they come together and meet, even though their world lines were as straight as possible. So the apple actually was moving, because like everything else, it's moving through time. It's getting older. The apple and the Earth both have straight vertical paths on the space-time diagram, but because their mass bends space-time, their paths through time will begin to lean together. I am Albert and I approve this message.